Hello everybody, this is Video Lancer, and this is my new video tutorial for After Effects. Today we will look at creating interface animation. In the first part of the tutorial, I will show how to make hover effects that work automatically without keyframes. In the second part, we will create the effect of maximizing the application window, which is the same as in Mac OS. This effect is entirely customizable, and you can easily move the initial point of transition to any place. But before we start, I'd like to recommend a really great product from my friends. It's Gravity. Gravity Package comprises more than a thousand of motion design templates that work in both After Effects and in Premiere Pro. Each scene is made with perfection, with love, as well as with the system of auto resize. It means that your video will look fine whatever screen aspect ratio, whether it's YouTube videos or Instagram stories. The link to Gravity, as well as to our other products, you can find in the description of this video. Well, let's start our tutorial. Create a new composition with full HD resolution. Name it Main Comp. Drop your background image into this composition. Now let's make a simple pointer. Switch on Action Safe Display and draw a pointer with the pen tool so that the tip can be precisely in the center of the composition. Delete Stroke Effect in Shape Contents and name this layer Pointer. Add the Drop Shadow Effect. Increase Distance and Softness a little in Effect Parameters. Now create one more composition with 200 by 200 pixels resolution. Name it Icon Holder 1. Insert any icon here and drop it to the main comp. Next, we will create an automatic shift effect when the pointer hovers the icon. Apply transform effect to the icon holder layer. Click on the position parameter while holding the Alt key and insert this expression here. Now move the pointer closer to the icon it will shift on the distance specified in the expression. Since there will be several such icons, it will be more convenient to control these parameters on a single layer. To do this, add the slider control effect on the pointer layer. Rename it Hover Start. Set the slider value to 60. Duplicate this slider control for variables Hover End and Max Value. Now link variables in the expression with corresponding controllers. Using a similar expression, we can add any other effects that will vary when the pointer layer is moved closer. Let's make this effect as an example. So add the tint and drop shadow effect on the icon layer. Set the amount to tint to 70%. Set shadow direction to 180. Set softness to 10. Now copy this expression and paste it into amount to tint, distance, and softness parameters. To control the influence of additional effects, let's create separate controllers for the max value variable. Duplicate this slider control. Rename it as Tint. Do the same for the drop shadow effect. And link variables in the expression with corresponding controllers. Customize the Tint and Drop Shadow effect on the pointer layer. Now switch on Snapping Mode. Duplicate and shift the icon holder. Repeat this step several times, depending on the required number of icons. Select all layers with icons and move them to the bottom of the frame. Then we'll replace all these icons with others. To do this, go to the Project panel and duplicate the icon holder. We need seven copies for our example. Replace the source image in every icon holder.
Select the icon holder in Main Comp and drop it from the Project panel while holding the Alt key. Repeat this step for all the other icons. Well, not bad, but let's complicate the hover effect and add zoom for icons. Copy the expression from position and paste it into the scale of the layer. Make an additional slide control for scale on the pointer layer. Set the value on 2 and link this variable to it. To make scale work properly, let's correct this part of the expression. Copy the scale value and paste it for the other icons. Now let's change the general settings of the hover effect so that the pointer can influence several icons simultaneously. It doesn't look bad, but there is one problem. The icon that should be in the background overlaps the icon in the foreground. Let's fix it. Switch on 3D mode for all icons and the pointer. Paste the expression into the position of the icon layers. To keep the pointer in the foreground, just add a new adjustment layer between the pointer layer and the icons. The problem has been solved. Now everything works perfectly. All that is left is to add a bar. So create a new rounded rectangle and place it below icons. The color should be white. Let's name this layer as bar. Change the size and position of the bar layer by dimensions of the icons block. Switch on the adjustment layer mode and then apply the fast box blur effect. Set blur radius to 10 and switch on repeat edge pixels. Now duplicate the bar layer. Rename it as shadow. Delete the blur effect from it and switch off adjustment layer mode. Instead of this, switch its blending mode to multiply. Add drop shadow style to the layer by using right click and adjust it. Set angle to 90, set distance to 15, and size to 50. Also add bevel and emboss style. It's enough to decrease highlight a little here. Next, we will create the effect of maximizing the application window. Create a new composition with full HD resolution. Name it App Holder 1. Drop your footage or screenshot with an application into this composition. Drop App Holder into Main Comp. Apply Layer Control, Transform, and Bezier Warp effects to the App Holder layer. Create a new solid and name it Warp Control. Set Layer Opacity to 0 through the expression. Go to the App Holder layer and select the Warp Control layer on this list. Then we are going to link these Bezier Warp points with the Warp Control layer by expressions. Click on all these points while holding the Alt key. Paste this expression into each of the points. Now, while transforming the warp control layer, the app holder layer's contents will be distorted. Now let's make the transition animation. Select the frame that should be the beginning of the transition and animate the Y position of transform effect. Beginning with this frame, Let's animate the warp control layer in the order so it can be back to the initial transformations.
Additionally, we can switch on motion blur, but in a way that there is no blur on the top. It is possible to fix it by the curves effect and alpha channel settings. We can also add a small shadow. To do this, add the drop shadow effect and adjust it. Next, we will reverse the transition. Copy these keyframes and paste them a little farther along the timeline. Right click on the keyframes and select the Time Reverse option. Repeat the same steps for the second layer. It's done! Well, that is all. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel not to miss new products and tutorials about motion design. That was Video Lancer. See you next time.